Okay, this is kind of a simplified tutorial for this uh, kind of glass object I have here. And I'm going to fill it with water here in a second. And I have the animation for it that I'll play back as well. Because I'm also testing my frame rates for capturing things. And here's the basic setup. There's a lot of ways to set things up to capture water. But in this is how I use it in this particular case. Let me go into uh, wireframe here. And you can see it. So basically what I have are several objects in the scene. I have the glass itself like this. And then this cube object here is really a cutout of the glass. Notice if I go up in here, let me see. Well, I don't want to move that yet. Let me, let me see. I will go into material mode like this. And then you can see that it's this object like this. right? So that's the cutout. So that's actually my object that's within my boundaries of my fluid. And it's the one that's right over here. Right fluid obstacle like that. All right, and then the see if you get down here, the glass itself, it has no no thing set up. Let me get the other one. I'll go back into wireframe mode so you can see it. And then this one's separate. I actually have these disconnected at the moment, but this is a fluid. Oh no, that's not set up either. That's just the old that but that's the boundary of the glass. That's the outside of the glass here like that. So there's essentially two layers in here. Yeah, there you go. You can see it like that better. This is holding the fluid and that's just the glass around the fluid so you can see but because I have both of these set to glass that's why I have this kind of reflective surface out here and you can't see through the glass if I change it to say transparent then you'd be able to see through and you'd be able to see the water on the inside alright and then there's a little inflow object in here as well right there that's just dropping water in it you can kinda of see it right there so let me see where's the animation for this somewhere over here right, let's see if it'll run and uh, you can see where it okay there it is filling up like this and you'll see the boundaries here in a second I'll stop it right up in well I missed it but right no <laughs> right no I missed it again Too I right, close. So right in here you can it's running up against the boundary of the fluid, the domain it that is. Alright. So I could have just moved it up, but I didn't I wasn't intending to flow it over the top. So if I was gonna run the animation I'd just run it to about here and stop it like that. Alright. So that kinda gives you an idea. Yeah, I did a final rendering, no that was the resolution was one hundred on the simulation and the Rendering was set at 55, so that's just barely enough. As you can see, it looks kind of grainy in here like that. But even still, with this, it was, it was several hours to do the whole thing. Maybe it was one, two, maybe about two and a half to three hours to do the simulation and the and the running. Well, the nice thing about Cycles is since it uses the GPU, once you're done with the simulation, I just run the rendering in the background, and then I launch another version of Blender, and the performance is just fine because the GPU is taking care of the rendering and it multitasks just fine. So I would recommend using, you know, two, three copies of Blender at the same time if you have things running in the background. Okay, well, maybe that'll help you do your animations and I'll see you in the next lesson.